Hey guys, Rage Quitting here. I'm on my Juggernaut Tunnels, uh, and we are playing Vengeance. I'm gonna go over the utilities and talk about Vengeance a little bit before I show you some gameplay. All right, so basically, if you don't know anything about Vengeance, uh, the most important things you need to know is that every time you force charge, you have immunity to interrupts, stuns, knockdowns, and incapacitating effects for four seconds. Also, during this time, damage reduction is increased by 20%. Okay, so every time, that means you want to force charge as often as possible to keep that uptime of damage reduction and CC immunity. Okay, other things to know, your this is a bleed spec. It deals a lot of weapon damage, but it also deals a good amount of uh, dots. Okay, bleed damage. So your shatter, your impale, and your force scream, uh, you know, deal dot damage. Okay. Also important about Vengeance spec is you get uh, resets on your Ravage every time you use a Shatter. And your Vengeful Slam is a free, free, you know, no cost skill that spreads the dots. Okay, so basically what you do is you leap on somebody, you gain that CC immunity and damage reduction, you apply your dots on them, and, you know, if they're standing next to other players then you spread it with your vengeful slam okay the utilities real quick so we're gonna take warmonger because every time you get attacked it reduces the cooldown on force charge and which is good for you because you want to be able to do uh, force charge as often as possible because we have brawn okay get that CC immunity and damage reduction rolling okay we're gonna take overwhelm because uh, it makes your ravage immobilize the target for three seconds and since we get Ravage resets, we're going to be Ravaging very often, so we're going to take that root, okay? And also the root helps you to, you know, keep somebody still so that you can gain some distance on them and then go ahead and force charge on them again, okay, if you want to, keeping that uptime of damage reduction and CC immunity, okay? We're going to take Pooled Hatred. Uh, you know, basically, whenever your movement is impaired, you gain a 10% damage bonus to your next ability that consumes rage. Okay, and it can stack up to five times. So, you're going to leap on them, you're going to get your CC immunity and damage reduction for four seconds. If they CC you after your immunity wears out, you're going to gain a damage buff. Okay, so, Pooled Hate is very strong. Okay, you know, sometimes you'll see. Uh, you know, you'll get CC'd for, you know, more than five seconds long. So it'll stack up to five, you know, five times ten, you know, 50% damage bonus to your next ability. And when you finally get up to that, you know, your enemy target and you slap them super hard with your next ability. Okay, so pooled hatred is very strong. Okay, we're going to take unstoppable. And this is what I want to talk about a little bit more because uh, a lot of people think that unstoppable and brawn are the same thing and when you're playing vengeance you don't need to take unstoppable because you have brawn but they are they are two completely different things okay so because brawn gives you immune to interrupts stuns knockdowns and incapacitating effects but unstoppable gives you immune to movement impairing and push or pull okay so if you don't take this point you can still be pushed or pulled or slowed okay but if you use both, you know, if you take this and you already have brawn, then you are immune to all the types of CC in this game. All of it, okay, for four seconds. <clears throat> so you might as well take it, right? Okay, and then in Heroic Warbringer, uh, Force Charge gives your next Vicious Throw or Hue. Uh, you can use it on a target of any percentage of health, okay? So it's a free, it's a free Vicious Throw, it's a free Hue. Okay, every time you uh, force charge, which is very often. Okay, uh, through passion, reduce the cooldown of enraged defense by 30 seconds. You know, just you know, this is too good not to take. This is your main ability. You know, that helps you stay in fights longer. You can go from a quarter health to a full health. Um, you know, with this skill alone, and just you know, it allows you to fight longer. Okay, so taking through passion, legendary through victory. Okay, mad dash. Uh, gets rid of immobilize okay and uh, it has a reduced cooldown on it so and mad dash helps you to get 
you know, another force charge off. Let's say you're rooted and you're standing right on top of somebody and, you know, force charge has a minimum distance on it so you can't, you can't force charge to somebody if you're standing right on top of them. So you can just mad dash away and then force charge right back, you know, and get that nice CC immunity and damage reduction. Okay? And then we're going to take Thrown Gauntlet, reduce cooldown of force push, intimidating roar by 15 seconds each, and Saber Throw immobilizes the target for 3 seconds. Okay, so force push, if you don't know, force push reduces the cooldown on your force charge, and having a lower cooldown on force push lets you force charge more often. Okay, and that is the setup there. As far as the gear goes, you don't need any alacrity, all you need is high power and high crit. Okay, and accuracy. This I use this for PvE and PvP, so I have 110% here. Um, which is still fine for PvP. I don't really change it, but you want to, you know, you you could do without that if you wanted to. But I'll tell you right now, I never miss, okay, unless somebody's using, you know, higher uh, DPS rating uh, skills or, you know, I'm, I'm attacking a tank or something. But yeah, I rarely miss uh, any attacks at all. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna run through a rotation on the uh, Warzone training dummy here for you guys. So, you know, basically, you know, start with the force charge. You you can start with a saber throw if you wanted to, but just keep in mind that, you know, let's let's just say another Vengeance Juggernaut is running at you, right? If he happens to leap leap at you first before you throw your you know you get your saber throw off, he's gonna have the CD immunity and damage reduction right on top of you, and you know you're just gonna be stuck there because he's gonna ravage you immediately after so, so a lot of the times it's better to just enter with force charge just to make sure that you get the jump on him and they don't get the jump on you okay uh, so, so anyway you know force charge we're gonna force charge we're gonna free proc on our hue then we're going to you know ravage root the target and then go ahead and apply your dots with impale shatter and force scream and then we're gonna pretend that there's other players around here so we're gonna spread it with our vengeful slam okay and then just you know continue from there all right so here we go oh, I got a free proc on my hue so I can throw another one go ahead and roll your dots reset that ravage root them again or scream apply more dots and then vengeful slam okay and if your force charge comes off cooldown you know do it again keep that uptime of that damage reduction and CC immunity, okay? Reset the Ravage again, okay, apply more dots, fail, alright, spread the dots, oh, force charge is coming off cooldown, get away, another force charge, another free hue, alright? You guys get the idea. This rotation is endless, okay, it can go on forever, alright? And you rarely even use, you know, Vicious Slash or, you know, Assault. Assault's not even on my bar because the rotation is so smooth that you can just keep doing it over and over and over. Okay? You guys get the idea. Alright, I'll show you some gameplay footage. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Alright, here's a great example of why Vengeance Juggernaut is so strong. I'm going to let this clip roll out for, for a bit and then I'll talk about it afterwards. Alright guys, let's not get hung up on what he could have done or what he, you know, should have done, but I mean, for starters, he's a stealth class. He should not have came out of base uh, unstealth, you know, so that was the first mistake there. And then he could have uh, stealthed away or, you know, rolled away or whatever, but let's just get to the video here. So I root him, and then I leap, I get my CC immunity and damage reduction, so he can't CC me to even get away, even if he wanted to. I get the Ravage Root of Free Hue off from the leap, and then when my CC immunity wears off, I choke him so that I can deal more damage through the choke while he's stunned. As soon as he cleanses it, I notice that he cleansed it, so I pushed him away, reset that leap, leapt on him again, get that, uh, you know, CC immunity going, and then just continue, you know, to beat his face in. And, you know, there's not much that he could have done after that. 
Hey guys, so to recap on Vengeance Juggernaut, um, make sure you just keep getting those force charges off as often as possible, okay? It has a 15 second cooldown, which is already, um, you know, not not a long cooldown, but since you have that utility warmonger, you know, every time you're attacked, it reduces the cooldown by a second, you know, every one and a half seconds. So you could have your force charge back up in like 9 seconds, 10 seconds, instead of, you know, the full 15. And a lot of people forget that they're that their you know force charge is off cooldown but they're still you know in people's face fighting and stuff um, and doing their thing but like you know the longer that you you know you want to always keep that uptime of CC immunity and damage reduction um, it's offensive and defensive right every time you force charge they can't do anything to you so juggernaut is one of those classes that I mean vengeance juggernaut specifically is one of those classes that does not give a fuck right like every time you leap in you can do whatever the hell it is that you want to do for four seconds every time you leap and you know in between that you know you have so many utilities that you know you can reset your leap with force push um, you know if if people are on top of you and you need to quickly get at that force charge off then you can you know mad dash away create that distance and then jump right back on onto your target right um, also you have lower cooldown on your AOE stun your awe right your I mean your intimidating roar it's called awe on the Republic side sorry I'm burping I just took a little sippy of my beer but yeah, get get those off. Keep doing those force charges. Uh, you have your Ravage Root as well that helps you reset your force charge. I mean, if people are running around the map uh, or running around the fight and they're trying to get away from you, then let them. Let them get away from you for a second. Go the other way and then just leap at them again. You know what I mean? But if they're coming at you and they're sticking to you but you want to get that leap off, then just go ahead and do that Ravage Root. You, you know, you root them with the Ravage, then you walk away for a second and then leap onto them and gain that CC immunity and damage reduction again, okay? Uh, that's basically the thing, you know, you just want to keep on getting that buffs on yourself as often as you can. And you'll be surprised how much longer you can stay in fights, how much more damage that you will deal in the end be just because uh, of the pressure, you know, the pressure of being immune to CC and you know just the damage reduction itself you'll see a lot of people waste CC on you um, within those first four seconds and then they're screwed you know they have nothing um, let's see more uh, juggernaut tips in general uh, so when you use your endure pain uh, just keep in mind that after the effect of endure pain runs out you're gonna lose a little bit of health so um, this is not the first defensive utility that you want to use you want to use you know your reflect and your enraged defense and your saber ward first um, but and and when you finally do use your indoor pain you want to use it in conjunction with a med pack because med pack heals you uh, for 35 percent of your maximum health using indoor pain increases your maximum health okay so you can this is like a full health bar right here when you're maybe at like you know 20 percent, 25 percent, you use endure pain and a med pack. Boom, you're all the way to 100 percent health. And then, you know, just having enraged defense as well, you can heal from from none to full. Uh, especially if you use it alongside saber reflect, right? Because saber reflect uh, reflects damage. If you use en Enraged Defense by itself when you are already really low health, there's a chance that they could burst you through the heals, right? So you want to make sure that you're at least using Enraged Defense with either a Saber Reflect or a Warzone Adrenal or, I mean, sometimes I've used it with Saber Ward as well. Um, but just keep in mind, if you use Enraged Defense when you're really, really low uh, you're p by itself, you're probably not going to get healed from it. You're probably just going to get bursted through the heals and you're going to die. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else. Uh, you know, intercede, intercede, you know, uh, leap to a friendly target. Okay. Um, Juggernaut does not have two leaps like Marauder does if you spec for it. So once you use a leap, uh, it's on cooldown, right? But let's, let's just say somebody, you know, you leap at somebody, they end up getting away from you, and then you have no way to close that gap. Just look for your friendly players around the map for the next target or, you know, 
someone who's close close to another target and you can just intercede on them and then just start beating them up uh yeah and don't forget to use your taunts your single target taunt and your aoe taunt pretty much every time you're grouped up next to people just throw it out okay throw out your uh your aoe taunt and i don't know just use your taunts off cooldown basically as long as they're not attacking you your taunt is working okay um guarding people Sometimes I'll guard people, but that just depends. If I have a lot of health and le like, let's just say there's a 2v2 somewhere, right? A 2v2 fight, me and a friend, and then two enemies, and they are beating the shit out of my friend and not targeting me, um, I'll guard him sometimes. If it, means, if it means that you might win the fight, I'll guard him. But if the guy, if your teammate is just bad and he kind of sucks, then he's just a wasted, you know target to guard right because you're just gonna be taking free damage for him um, yeah so guard is a situational thing I don't really use it too much especially because you know I'm not playing tank and I I don't even have a shield generator I'm using a focus so I can get you know maximum damage as possible uh, let's see what else what else I mean I guess that's pretty much it yeah don't don't use enrage defense by itself if you are super low you gotta use it with something else and you'll gain a so much more health back um, don't use indoor pain by itself you know you always want to make sure you have that med pack ready to go that's why I have these on you know cl really close hotkeys so when I when I need to use it it's just you know boom boom um, and yeah P you know how to deal how to deal a lot of damage at the end of the war zone you just got to be very active you know stick to the right targets um, <clears throat> And swap targets when you see defensive cooldowns running. I, I already said this previously in uh, my Marauder Guide, but it, it, it's the same for every single class. Every DPS class that you play, uh, you want to be swapping targets uh, pretty often. You know, if, if, if let's say I leap at this guy and he throws up his uh, Saber Ward, then all my attacks following his defensive cooldown are going to be not dealing as much damage to him or not even hitting him at all, right? So whenever you see somebody using a defensive cooldown, don't try and DPS through it because you're going to do a lot more DPS if you just switch to another target that does not have a defensive cooldown running. And once this, once that first target's uh, defensive cooldown runs out, then you can switch back to him and just go right back and beat him up some more. Okay? Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. I'll uh, see you on another one. Peace.